everybody this is Robert from Mole3D today we're going to take a look at how we can modify an existing model to make it easier for 3D print uh, it could be a model you download off of Pinshape or just online or your friend gives you and I'm going to use this model that I did for the Pinshape contest going on right now because actually uh, I didn't get a chance to print it after I was done modeling it and then after I got a chance to print it, I found a few changes that I wanted to make to the model to allow me to print it easier and uh, allow everyone to print it easier. So uh, a good example was this part of the arm. So if we take a look at the original arm, you see how it's all one piece. And naturally, um, you know, I modeled this thing in all separate pieces, but I combined it all just to keep it a simple OBJ. And uh, after the fact, I realized, you know, I really want to make this piece two separate pieces. I want I want this arm here to end and I want it to plug into the hand and have it maybe maybe the hand can turn or something like that. And you know, obviously I have the source files I can easily revert back to the original one and just uh not combine them and I'm done. Uh but for someone who may be downloading this model online or uh they have their own models or they like I said before they download any model and they want to splice it up and make it easier for print. Uh, I just want to show you guys a technique on how we can do that. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. For this project, we're going to use ZBrush, uh, my software of choice. And let's look at how these two pieces work together. Now, we have this section where it just kind of terminates, uh, albeit sloppily, into the what would be a wrist area. Um, now, first thing in ZBrush, I always duplicate my subtool. And uh, let's do that here. Uh, in the subtool part, we'll go duplicate. So we have two. And I'll hide the bottom one, and we'll just work on this one. So for this part, we want to isolate just the top section that we want to keep. So let's go ahead and hit Control-Shift. And I'm going to do select lasso. And then let's isolate this area. Um, now, I want to keep the top portion and kind of get rid of the bottom. So by holding Alt now, I can hide the part that I want to get rid of. Um, and so let's go ahead and just delete those portions there. So that one's hidden. Let's go to the other tool that we have. And let's do the inverse of that. Let's keep this one visible and then kind of hide the top part. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And we can be pretty loose with the selection. So that's pretty good. All right, so we kind of have two pieces. I'm just going to quickly slide this over so you see what we got. We have two pieces that kind of overlap a little bit, but essentially now we have two pieces of model. So let's go ahead and isolate the one part of the arm. Now, the easiest way to do this, so we, we're bringing in a, a pre-decimated model. This model has been poly-reduced, so it's really lightweight. We need to up the resolution of that. So let's go to Geometry and uh, Dynamesh. And then let's set this Dynamesh to... Uh, I'm going to set it to 1,000, and let's see where that gets us. I've gone ahead and dynamesh this model. I found that a uh, dynamesh resolution of 500 for the hand is probably pretty good. Um, now, that resolution is really dependent on scene size, so um, don't think about it too many as, like, how many millions of polygons or anything like that. So we've dynameshed this together. You can see it automatically filled in this hole at the top. Um, this now is a watertight surface, or nearly watertight surface. Um, now, we want to pretty much clip off this section of geometry and make this a nice flat area. And then we're going to punch a hole in it for the arm to poke in. Let's go ahead and get an advantageous angle here and use our uh, slice tool. So if we go uh, control shift and then on my toolbar, I have it selected here. I'm going to slice. Now, this is merely going to just cut a ring of polygons around there. You can't really see anything happen, but you can see how this changed color. And that's pretty much what we want. And then if we go and hit control click on the main body, all of that stuff disappears. Um, and turn off polygon frame, and that's pretty good. And I'm going to hit delete, hidden, and close holes, both of which I have on my toolbar because I use them all the time. And now that we have that down, let's go ahead and get another advantageous angle. Instead of using slice curve, let's clip curve. And then I'm going to just go ahead and clip this down. Now, this is already sort of an existing design, so I want to be careful and kind of keep, I don't want to like damage out here or do something weird and mess up the rest of the model. We want to keep our edits localized. Uh, I'm going to pull this up just a bit, and then I'm going to reclip this down. I want to get this as flat as possible all the way across. That looks pretty good. So after doing that, um, anytime you use the clip curve tool, 
you're going to have polygons that are essentially just smushed down. We're going to want to redynamesh that. So I'm going to drag our mask out. And it's going to redistribute all our polygons evenly. So that's done. So you can see now we have perfectly distributed polygons. All right, so now we have our arm model done. Let's go ahead and do the top part, which is uh, a little more tricky. So we're going to do the same thing with this one. Um, we're going to have to delete the um, uh, polygons that we don't want, which are, which are these ones down here. But first, we're going to have to dynamesh. So we want to do the same resolution or similar to our arm piece. Uh, and that will give us the best results. Don't forget to delete hidden first before running the Dynamesh. All right, so that's done. And now we're gonna go and use our tool to cut this off. Now, um, we can use transparent mode. I turned on the arm there to give us an idea of where we wanna cut this off. And now um, we kinda have this uh, ring that's terminating into the side of this arm. And we can either keep that or, or remove it. It's kind of up to us. Uh, for me, I guess it's close enough that I'm gonna just keep it. I might, I might actually pull this down just a bit so it feels like it's a little more flush with the bottom, and it will just look like it makes more sense. Uh, Alrighty, so that's pretty good. So we want to do the same thing. We're gonna use our, um, I just say Control W there to change and repolygroup the whole model. Uh, so let's use the slice curve and then drag this and then the area, the, the direction of the gradient is gonna actually cause the bottom part to be a new poly group. So we're gonna slice that, we're gonna hit control shift and then grab the green, uh, control shift and click on the green area and we're gonna delete hidden and then close holes. So it's already done, delete hidden, close holes. So now we have these two pieces all ready to go and now we just need to sort of make them uh, fit together. So before we do anything, let's just take a look at our edge here. We wanna make sure that this edge is kind of consistent all the way around. And because I modeled this thing in a way that I thought it was gonna be a completely one piece, I didn't really care about the distances here. But now that we're sort of modifying this, we can go ahead and pull this area out just a smidge. And we can see um, we can see that there's a nice kind of consistent ring all the way around. And that's gonna just look better, it's gonna print better, and uh, just be better for everybody. So let's do that real fast, and that's pretty good. And I'm doing my best to maintain a like flat surface on here. Um, you can always use the H polish brush and run around the, the top and I'll um, just kind of smooth out some of these edges and give it that more uh, polished look. Um, we're getting into the area of, it's more of an artistic decision rather than a more of a technical one. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, all right, so it's pretty nice. Flatten that again. H polish is your best friend. Okay, that's cool. All right, so now we got this arm. Now we got to plug this arm into there. Um, now, after th some experimentation, I found the easiest way to do that: simply use an insert mesh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna smooth out this edge here, so this kind of rounds out a little bit. This kind of looks a little bit nicer than that super crisp edge. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this thing and kind of pull that in, kind of kind of square it up like it used to be. Um, kind of like matching the other one, I guess. And then smooth that out. And then I'm gonna redynamesh this thing. And that's gonna get rid of all those artifacts. And then s simply hit it with this polish brush. Not too much though. Still pretty low resolution model. So I have to be kind of careful. All right, so let's go ahead and use the insert mesh. So let's turn on the visibility of that model and just kind of see how far we wanna go. We want this mesh to stick in uh, about that far. So maybe, uh, well, I don't know, the size of my brush, somewhere around there. Um, and let's go B, I, and then insert cylinder. All right, so once we have that, we can turn on our uh, visibility. So if you just hit the W key, we're gonna get our transpose tool, and it's gonna be in alignment with our model that we just inserted. So we can rotate this into place. Then we can just drag it in. Drag it down. I'm using the WER, the standard move rotate scale. And then that's pretty nice. All right, so that's far enough. And then let's turn off our hand. All right, let's just make sure that this thing kind of feels like it's it's kind of the similar size as everything else. Um, it's pretty close, pretty close. We can scale this thing up a little bit. And then 
Uh, right now, this whole thing is one piece of geometry, uh, technically two, but it's it's part of the same tool. Um, and this one has a mask on. If you hit Control, it's going to invert our mask, and then we can actually take this piece in and kind of push it in and make it feel like it's it's round and and kind of wrapping around this piece of geometry. All right, that's pretty good. All right, I'm liking that. So I'm going to hit Control again. Um, if we click on the center of this geometry, we can uh, make this thing a little longer. And uh, and then that's pretty good. All right, so that's how far in we're going to the hand. That's pretty good. That's going to give us lots of room to sort of stick it in. And uh, it'll, it'll fit together nicely. Um, sorry, we're, I'm happy with that. So let's make this one piece of geometry now. Uh, clear your mask, control, and click. And then just control and drag again. And now we have one piece of geometry. And that's pretty great. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is I tend to not like perfectly hard edges like this. Um, I like to have some kind of bevel. And uh, the way I like to do that is um, if we just simply mask the edge here. So just kind of get a get an angle and mask that and invert it. If you just drag this out and then scale, you can create like a bevel. That's pretty good. And we're going to redraw our Dynamesh. All right. And then, then let's just hit this with, with a polish real fast. And obviously, oh, and ZBrush wants to save. All right. That's going to be nice and clean. It's going to slide in. Perfect. Okay. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And let's see. Okay, that's cool. All right, so the final step is to chop a hole into our arm piece. Now, to do that, we don't want to just take this piece and leave it as is and cut a hole. We want to actually increase the size of this to give us uh, a tolerance. Um, and tolerance is always based on how big you're printing. So you sort of have to do your best to guesstimate um, how big you should go. Uh, for this particular character, he's exporting out of ZBrush at 8 inches tall. Um, so that's it's a pretty good size. He's he's going to need less tolerance if, than uh, if he was printing out at something super small. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have to duplicate this piece. Um, and then let's select our arm. And uh, so we have a backup copy. So I'm going to just hide that one. And then we have our arm here. So let's move the the shoulder and the arm underneath the hand piece. And then let's go down to the deformation tab. And then let's go ahead and inflate. Now inflate is tricky because inflate always moves relatively to the size of the scene. So uh, between you know four and eight might be pretty good for us. So let's just try five for now. All right, so that's that's going to be our cutting shape. We're basically using this as a Boolean. Um, and then let's go and cut it out. So uh, to do that, we go to the half moon here and select our arm. Let's merge these down. Merge down. And it's going hey, to ask you, do you want to do that? And you say, hell yeah. And then simply just redraw your Dynamesh mask. And then it's going to cut away our arm. In the event that this, this doesn't work, just make sure all your polygroups are one. The arm is one polygroup and the hand is one polygroup by hitting Control W. All right, so we got our piece done. And then let's look at that. And let's turn off transparency. So when you zoom in really close, you should see a pretty good size gap between the two p models. And uh, that looks pretty good. It might be a bit tight. I mean, keep in mind this thing is going to print out and be pretty small. So that's like maybe one one millimeter in there so um, in the event that that's not uh, big enough um, you'll find out through printing to be honest it's always better to over overdo it a little bit and then just fill it in with a little bit of glue than to underdo it um, this is another reason why I like printing pins separately so like for example this part and the arm or the sorry the the torso like this part the, this is separate here so if if I need to, I can always just scale this piece down or up to fit um, as needed. Um, but for this one, we're baking it into the arm, so to speak. So now we're left with uh, two pieces. So let's just say that tolerance is good. We have our arm. We have our hand now. And uh, let me go print it out, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. And I'm going to show you the reason why I wanted to do this tutorial in the first place. So 
Uh, let's jump over to the video now. Okay, taking a look at the very first arm print that I did, you can see that the fingers did not successfully print and the, the, the top of the shoulder area just did not come out well. Um, that's the primary reason what inspired me to do this uh, change in the first place. Also, you can see that the weird uh, layer lines in there because of the uh, very odd uh, orientation that you have to do a piece this long. So that was another reason why I felt like I wanted to have more control over how I orient this piece, um, especially like the fingers failing. Um, and this is exactly the same settings on the printer. I didn't change anything. And this is the two pieces. So notice the smooth layer lines because I can orient this in a certain way. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But you can see the successful print, um, the, the surface is perfectly smooth. There's no weird uh, sort of edges or any kind of uh, you know anomalies, so to speak. And uh, I use support for this as well. So. Um, notice how the hand is really glossy smooth. I mean, obviously the, the video is picking up most of that, but you see I printed these uh, facing up like this, and that allowed us to get the most resolution around the uh, print. And this one is also printed very vertical. Um, and the original print, the other one that failed, was printed uh, sideways or long ways. So this is the final piece of the robot. You can see all the pins are separated. Uh, the arms count great. Uh, so a recommendation for printing is the feet print standing up with uh, supports. Uh, the arms should be printed with the fingers aimed upwards as well. Um, and the arms, is more vertical you can get them, the better. And um, everything else uh, printed uh, fantastic. So if you guys want to print one yourself, head over to pinshape.com and find us under the Makertron contest section or find us user a mold 3D. Thank you again for watching another Mold 3D tutorial. Until next time, uh, please subscribe, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. We have a lot of cool photos on there and, and happy printing.